So we left off here and we had found that the sea ice here was, or we had a rate of change of negative 0.07 million square kilometers per year. And I wanted to bring up the punchline of that, if you will. Actually, Steve wanted to, and I'm just his lackey here. Um, that every, What that means is that every year that goes by, for every single year, the sea ice is decreasing by 0 0.07 million square kilometers. Notice it's decreasing. You can tell mathematically because it's a negative unit ratio here, negative rate of change. Now take a moment and look at that because what we're saying is that that rate of change can be interpreted in a very specific way, right? For every one, because it's unit, every one year unit ratio that, that occurs that goes by that passes whatever every single year that sea ice is decreasing by that much and that's for every one in the x direction. right and that's for every one in the x direction that's because it has to be a unit ratio and x is the denominator so that will be with the denominator all right so that's going to help us here now this isn't really have that story problem context of sea ice or whatever but we can use that idea of hey, whenever the x goes up by 1, what happens to the y, right? That's what this rate of change is finding. It's saying, hey, when your x changes by 1, because it's a unit ratio, what occurs? So let's look here. At set number 1 right here, just ignore the rest of them for a second, and just look at this top left one. As x goes up by 1, from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and so on, look at your y value. It goes from 2 to 3, excuse me, 2 to 5, 5 to 8, 8 to 11, 11 to 14. What's happening? Well, we're increasing, right? And we're increasing by the same amount every time. That's the hallmark of a linear relationship, like what we see here. That's right. This is a linear relationship. It's got this sea ice thing that's going down by 0.07 every year, no matter what. That's a slope. That's a rate of change. So this is linear here for this one. All right, now the question is, if it's linear... Can we find, oh, I don't know, the slope of it, right? That's what they ask us to do, find the slope right here. All right, so if it's linear, and it is, that means it's got to have a slope. Let's find it. Slope, remember, is your rate of change. So it's how fast your y is changing for every x. It's your rise over your run. Let me put it over here. Okay, so m is equal to, oops, fraction, rise over run. And remember, that's change in y over change in x. So let's look at that. Change in y over change in x. All right, now what's the change in our y? All right, every time our x goes up by 1, our y is going up by 3, right? So from 2 to 5, 5 to 8, 8 to 11, 11 to 14, every time it goes up by 3. So that's your change in your y's. And your x, it's 1 every time on this table. So it's 3 over 1, which we all know is just plain 3. Because math people are lazy. <laughs> they don't generally write 3 over 1, even though it's technically correct. They just write 3. right? So that's our slope, 3. Good. Done with that. All right. Now we're going to do it all over again over on this side for this one. All right. So let's look. Do we have that kind of consistency that we want to see here? Every time the x goes up by something, like 1 in this case, is my y going up or down by something? So let's look. We go from 95 to 91. That means we subtracted 4, right? And then 91 to 87, that's another subtract 4. Then 87 to 83, that's another subtract 4, and so on. So this one is also linear. Right? You might be wondering, hey, what's it going to look like if it's not linear? Well it'll kind of do different things like for example let me write this down so what if it had gone 95 to 91 that's a difference of four and then the next number was i don't know 80 so it was a difference of 11 or something and then the next number was i don't know 62 or something like that just 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 totally out of whack they're not matching each other linear ones are the ones where every time the x goes up by something like one in this case, the y changes by the same amount every time. So you got to look in that table and see that pattern. Is it going up by, or in this case, down by four, down by four, 
down by four, down by four. That's linear. That's the hallmark of a linear pattern. Because what you're seeing there is that change in Y, that numerator that you want so badly for your slope. The I'm getting there. Hold on. So what would that mean for our numbers? What's our change in Y here? So it's four, right? We can see that because you got the four, 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 but it's negative because you're going down by four, right? And what about your X? Well, it's going up by one, up by one, up by one. So that's a positive one for your X, but a negative four for your Y because you're dropping. So your slope is negative four on that one. Okay, now again, look back over here. That change in Y was positive three, positive three, positive three, positive three. That's a sign that it's linear increasing by three every time here when the x is consistent and here decreasing by four right all right what about down here let's see 11 to 23 that's a difference of 12 right if you add 12 you'll get 23 now let's take 23 plus 12 and that indeed is 35 so that's looking good now take 35 plus 12 yep that's 47 and 47 plus 12 Ah, it's 59. Okay, so this is another linear one. I don't know if we ever did any nonlinear ones in this one, but it's linear as well because it's consistent. You want to look for that consistency. So are you seeing this slope formula to kind of appear as you go? Okay, so let's see here. We got our change in y, which we said was 12, and it's positive because it's increasing. Now it all it all will fall apart if those x's aren't going up by the same amount every time but they are. So they're doing two, three, four, so that's perfect. That's a difference of one again, right? Two plus one makes three. Three plus one makes four. Be careful, because if this was like two, four, nine, 22, 36, hike, whatever, on your X, then that wouldn't be linear, right? It has to be that they're both consistently rising, right? Ha or, or falling by, by the same amount every time. It's gotta be have that consistency, which this one does. X is going up by one every time, and the Y is going up by every, by 12 every time, which means our slope is 12 on that one, right? Because 12 over 1 makes 12. Now, this last one's a little strange, a little odd, but I'm going to tell you that it is actually also linear, right? So x is increasing, right, right here, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, blah, blah, blah. But it's a little bit strange over here because the y isn't increasing by anything, right? I mean, your y is staying consistent at 4 the whole time. So what's your change then? If you go four, 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 what's the change in that? And the answer is it's a big fat zero, right? You're, you're increasing by nothing or decreasing by nothing, zero. And zero over one, because that's what your change in X's are, means that you have zero slope for this one. And that is linear. Right? It's kind of a special case of linear. Alrighty, we're done with that one. Let's move on to this one. A person earns a starting salary of thirty thousand dollars at a company. Each year, she raises fifty. Uh, she receives, excuse me, a fifteen hundred dollar raise. Let S be the person's salary in thousands of dollars after she has worked at the company for T years. Hmm. Okay. So there's something to kind of pay attention to, and it's a little minor point, or at least it seems like it is, but it's actually kind of a big deal. Right here. This, line, this number right here, we can all hopefully know that that's important because it's a number and a math problem that tends to be kind of a big deal. But do you see how it says 30,000 like that? Right? 30,000. Not $30. It's not like she receives a starting salary of $30. It's $30,000. Right? So that's not written in standard notation. But down here, $1,500 for her raise, that is in standard notation. They didn't say... $1.5 thousand dollars, which is what it would be, right? So 1,500, they didn't say that. You know, they said, you know, $1,500 raise, it's, it's a little bit strange. So we gotta kind of be careful with our units here. We have to keep it consistent. It actually doesn't matter which way you like writing it as long as you're consistent. So let's think about our slope, right? So let me write it out right here. Okay, the answer is there's two options for you. So you can say the slope is 1500 right? $1,500 per year, $1,500 per year, like that. That's fine, right? That's standard notation, good. 
Or if you want to be consistent with the way they wrote the other number, 1,000, then you can say this is 1.5,000, one, one whole thousand group plus a half of another thousand group, right, 1,500. So you could write it either out with 1500 with all the zeros, or you can write it 1.5 and then the word thousand. Either way is correct. All right, now what does that mean? Well, just like the sea ice back here meant every year that went by, something happened. That's what you're going to say here. So for every, in this case, year, right? Because years was our independent variable, our T. So we're saying for every year that goes by, and again, notice year is the independent variable. That happens a lot, right? Her salary is going to increase. Increase because this is a raise that she's getting, right? Right there, raise. It's going to increase by $1,500, Right? Or one point five thousand dollars, if you want to say it that way. All right. Now, what about the s-intercept? Well, again, you got to be careful. There's two ways you can write this. You could write it as thirty thousand. Right. Now, notice I put this on the left because it matches with this one. These two go together because they're the ones that write it all out with all the zeros. Right. So you could write zero comma three o o o o o, or you could write it as zero comma thirty. What you don't want to do is write the $1,500 they gave you and the 30 as if those are the same thing because they're not. If you do it that way, then it seems like you're getting a starting salary of 30 bucks, which is not good, right? So if you're going to write it out this way, then you want to say, you know, 30,000 maybe or something like that because that's the intercept. So you can write out the word thousand in English, right, with letters, or you can write it out in math with numbers, but you have to be consistent with both of them. All right, now what does this mean? Well, I, I kind of already spilled my beans on that one. It means that was her starting salary. So in her starting year, she made $30,000 at the company. And again, you could write it out in numbers, 30,000 to stand for thousand, or you could write 30,000, write the word out thousand in English. All right, now we got to find an equation of this model. So remember the standard form for an equation is, you know, hopefully everybody is y equals mx plus b, right? You think, you know, you think line equation, you think that, hopefully. And if not, you should, right? So you think y equals mx plus b. Now the tr trick for our problem is that we don't really have x and y. We have different variables. They said t years and s is the salary. See, s goes with salary, right? And t for time, right? Okay, so we want to say instead of y equals mx plus b, we want to say s, because s is our dependent variable, equals mt plus b. Again, time in, tends to be independent a lot. Not always, but a lot. All right, well, we already figured out that m was, and again, it's up to you guys. I'll do it this way. m is 1,500, t plus 30,000. That's one way you can write this equation. Or, and this is totally valid, you could write it S equals 1.5 T plus 30, right? That will also work. As long as you're consistent, life will be great. You still have your slope times T, T is your variable here, plus your intercept. All right, we're all done with that problem. I'll meet you back here for the last page in this particular bit, and then we'll go do some more. See ya.